Hello, pardon my lateness. There was a problem uh, sorting out uh, transport. So, um, if anybody's here, if they could just say hello, so I know that you're here. And we'll give it a couple of minutes for people to turn up. So, I know a lot of people watch these afterwards. Hi, Mike. So if nobody else turns up, I'm quite happy to work with just Mike, but it would be nice if a few more people turned up. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. Right, so everybody here, if you could say hello. So there's Mike, and who else is here? Alex, great, we'll just give it a couple of couple more minutes. China would be brilliant, hi. Excellent. Let's give it a couple of minutes. Hey, Keisha, that's cool. I'll start when we get to about eight. Uh, good. Who edited it? So if you've just arrived, if you could just introduce yourself so I know who I know who to talk to. So I know about Mike, I know about Alex, I know about Shinobi, I know about um um Shinobi, um your Comments on the videos, incidentally, when you try and transcribe, you do a really good job, you get really close, but then sometimes there's a few little spelling errors. So with, I absolutely appreciate what you're trying to do, but can you just not, by all means, email me and I will check your transcription, but can you not leave them as comments like that underneath the videos? Because people are going to start thinking that that is the, the formal transcription and sometimes there's a few little things. Right, good. So let's just start. So today we're doing a business letter. So, great. So can I all begin with, let's say we are writing to a lady first. So can I ask you to say, dear madam, um, I hope that you're well. So could you start with, dear madam, I hope that you're well. So if you could all type that. Have you already? Right, Mike, I want you to think what verb is being used with well-being. If I said to you, hi, Keisha, are you well? I'm going to say, tu vas bien, vous allez bien, ça va? I'm using what verb? So even in business communication, which verb do I use for how, how what do I use for well-being? Good, when anyone, anyone else is ready to type. If you don't want to type, that's absolutely fine. You're welcome to observe. But if you could just, if you could just say, I'm not typing, right. Chère madame, j'espère que vous allez bien. Uh, great. We've got a tiny little error uh, uh, on the espère. Have a little look at mics. So I'll give it a couple of seconds. Anybody else going to type? If you're typing, fine. If you're not, just let me know. Right. So basically, j'espère que vous allez bien. So basically, I really want those of you that are going to be sending emails. And it's not like this isn't reflected in your pronunciation, but can you basically acknowledge that some verbs have E's that just move backwards and forwards? So for example, um, you know, um, préférer, je préfère, the long way, espérer, Accent on the acute, j'espère, on the grave. So notice that when you say, you go, j'espère, it kind of goes longer. So can you just be mindful of that? So I hope you're well. J'espère que vous allez bien. Good. Notice that the same word, cher, in the masculine won't have an accent. So dear Michael, cher, you know, Mike, whatever, it will it will be spelled like the singer, C-E-H-E-R. So cher, madame. Okay, I hope that you're well. Okay. Um, uh, I received your email uh, three days ago. I received your email three days ago. So if you could write, I received your email three days ago. I received your email three days ago.
Almost, Mike. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Good. So, uh, Lola, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name pr properly. I apologize. So, Lolwa, Lolva. Um, J'ai reçu votre mail il y a trois jours. So, be careful because three days is a is a plural. So, this is something that you're going to be careful with. So, whether or not this is for exams or for your own typing, if you look at the words, if I typed, if I typed beautiful and I typed it incorrectly, I'd look at that word and I'd go, oh, that looks like shit. There's clearly a problem. And my, my eye would tell me that that was wrong. If I looked at a word that's in French, if I looked at that word jour, my eye is not going to tell me that's wrong because that isn't wrong. That is, that is the correct spelling. It's just not the correct spelling that we want. And this is particularly important for conjugations. Yeah, the word you're looking at, so say I said he was, and I wrote he lette, okay? I'd look at that and I'd go, hmm, yeah, that word ette, that looks correct. It does freaking look correct, but it looks correct for the wrong person. So I'd obviously need ette for him. So be careful with things. So basically, j'ai reçu, now, there is a cedilla, as we've established, on the C. Uh, that's exactly right, Mike. There's a cedilla on the C. So um, let's just talk about what's going on in French with this when you have a hi Deepesh, welcome to the class. So when you have a when you have a C in French, plus an E or plus an I, most of the time it's going to be like an S. Okay, uh, uh, it's going to soften it. Yeah. Okay. So for example, if I had garçon, okay, look what, what look what I've needed to do. I needed to pop on a, a, a cedilla because otherwise it'd be garçon. Okay. If I had a commencé to start, no cedilla, because I've got a C and an E. If I had wax, cire, yeah, or cerise, cherry, no cedilla required, because it's an E or an I. So basically, we are saying E and I are good vowels, and the others are just weak. They're piss poor. So if I had the word I lived, uh, uh, yes, shall I be typing my name? Um, oh, you were talking about the spelling of loop in a C or something? So basically, if you've got... Um, um, oh, hi, don't worry about that. That's fine, Ray. Nice to see you. So if you've got the verb I lived, you know, j'ai vécu, hard C, hard C. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Shinobi, I will do, but basically um, uh, there's a whole video on ku in which all the ku expressions are explained. Okay, so if you could basically, if you drop me an email, yeah, logiclanguagelearning at gmail.com, I will send you that video, all right? Um, uh, lovely. So back onto our thing. So I'm sorry. Um, so I received your email. J'ai reçu votre email. What is the other thing we say in French for an email? What is the more formal, more French, if you will, way that we refer to an email? What's, what's the word for an email in French? We use email, absolutely, but what's, what, do we, what do we call it? Okay, we've got uh, well done, Shano, but you're not far. Courrier électronique. So, j'ai reçu votre courrier, j'ai reçu ton courrier. Courrier is mail, yeah, but courrier électronique. So, you will still hear it. You know, I received your email, you know, of the, on, on, you know, the, um, your email from the 13th of last month. You know, j'ai reçu votre courrier du 13, whatever, uh, juillet. So, 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 you will see that. Okay, again, notice electronique. Yeah, we've got a we've got an eh going on there. Great. So uh, you Lolva, you will say mail, you're absolutely right. You will hear mail, you will hear email, but courrier electronique. Double R on courrier. Great, lovely. So um so I received your email. Um, so what did you say? So I hope that you well just que vous allez bien. I received your email three days ago. Um I apologize, but I have been very busy at work. I apologize, but I have been very busy at work. So I apologize, which can obviously be with an SE or ZE, depending whether we're North American or, or European. So I apologize, uh, but I have been very busy at work.
Now, McClukey, I'm really interested in some of the vocab you've gone with. That's interesting. Okay, so you, and that's beautifully written with debordé with like overflow, um, inundated. Incidentally, those of you that don't know, that's the verb that we use in French when you say the um, the straw that broke the camel's back. In French, you say la goutte d'eau qui fait déborder la vase, the drop of water which makes the vase overflow. Um, uh, avec le travail, you know, you can say j'ai été débordé. Enfin, de travail, or, enfin, avec mon travail, or, you know, or, au travail would be better, really, at work, okay? Um, lovely. So what I'd like you to pay attention to, right, there's a couple of things that I'm really pleased with. Roshanobi, I'm really pleased with something. Uh, Ray, I'm really pleased with something. Uh, um, I'm, I'm pleased with, Alex, what you've written with the pronunciation, with the spellings. So good. So let me just correct them all. Well done. So, so I have been, can we make a big fat mental, you know, can we take time out to acknowledge that I have been is not I was. So I was busy at work, fine. It's not incorrect, but there is another tense, I have been. And as many of you have written, uh, j'ai été, the past, I've seen this, j'ai été, which is the one, two, three, okay? Lovely. Okay, so j'ai été occupé, you know. Uh, j'ai eu beaucoup de choses à faire. J'ai été enfin, inondé, inundated. Okay. J'avais, l'olva, that would be I had been. I had been, which would be further back, the plus perfect. Okay. Lovely. So, but your spelling of été is lovely. Okay. So I have been, lovely. Mike, je suis désolé, mais j'ai été. So Mike spelled été beautifully. Très occupé, lovely accents on the E. Can I? I remind you that if we're saying occupy for ladies, occupy with an E on the end. That's lovely. Shinobi, je m'excuse. Lovely. So not to forget that we've got s'excuser. Yes, yeah, so je m'excuse. Je présente mes excuses. Je présente mes excuses. Taf. <laughs> Taf and quoi um, would, not go in, uh, would not go in an email, but they would certainly be used orally. Yeah, okay. Taf being slang uh, for, for, for work and uh, quoi just being something that goes on the end. I'm a big user of quoi, okay? Taf is basically slang for work, yeah? It's a slang, it's like boulot, okay? But it's more slang for job rather than slang for work anyway. It would be like my job. So I've just said, I've gone with Shinobis. Um, um, oh, hi, Natasha, it's lovely, to, um, it's, uh, it's lovely to see you. So basically, can I now, can, just on a side note, um, uh, can I see, Alex, I've noticed you've spelt it correctly with Desley, that's great. And listen to it, désolé, you can hear the eh or eh, okay? Can I just ask you to write, I present my excuses. So can you write for me, je présente? Yeah, could you just write the verb for me, je présente, okay? Bearing in mind our theme, I wouldn't say it's the call way, you don't want to say, there's, there's, can, we, can we acknowledge the difference between call and uh, the register? So it's it's cool to speak properly. You wouldn't use it all the time, okay? Boulot is much more common, okay? Lovely, McLukey. So we've got je présente. We've got this accent, okay? Good, lovely. So je présente mes excuses, je m'excuse, je suis désolé, da 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 Now, before we go any further, can we acknowledge that if in your emails you were saying, I'm sorry that something else has happened, Notice the big fat difference between que and basque. If you use je suis désolé que, it is still a freaking emotion. So you would be bringing on the subjunctives. I'm sorry that you have had to wait. For example, je suis désolé que vous ayez dû. Yeah, subjunctive, vous ayez dû. Because it is a subjunctive inciter if you are going to basically have an emotion. So lovely. So by all means, say je suis désolé. That's absolutely grand. But just be mindful that if you say I'm sorry that and then a verb, yeah, then th that will be in the subjunctive. Yeah. So for example, I'm sorry that je suis désolé. Uh, Qu'est-ce que j'allais dire? Same désolé with same as occupé. Uh, if you've got a, a female writing, you'd have an e. And actually, it's je suis désolé. I can't see what, that, what I've written. Just je suis désolé que vous ayez Whatever, whatever, ever, ever comes next. Okay. Je regrette. Good question, Mike. Um, yeah, je regrette que vous ayez. Yeah, again, and it would also evoke um, uh, a subjunctive. Yeah, je regrette que. Je regrette is often used with a de and then an infinitive. So je regrette de vous informer. Je regrette de vous de, de devoir vous informer. Okay. Um, 
Ray, notice present, uh, you've got the word. So this is what I was saying earlier, Ray. You just missed it, okay? Um, uh, Ray, good. So uh, I'll see you later. Je dois uh, partir or je dois mon aller. So Ray, Ray might leave us for his own explanation. But to be out of here is son aller, the verb, okay? Uh, great. Uh, so je, je dois mon aller. And even if you were saying je dois with e, you'd be je dois y aller because it'd be the second infinitive, okay? Uh, lovely, Shinobi, that's lovely. Notice that du would have an accent on the u, okay? Je suis désolé que vous ayez du or que tu aies du attendre. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, and Ray, as I was trying to say, what you look at with a verb looks right. So what you've written with présent looks correct because that is how we would say the present, like the present tense. But je présent is the verb, so that would have an E. Great. So I'm sorry you've had to wait. Je suis désolé que vous avez dû, vous ayez dû attendre. Um, uh, but I've been very busy, okay? Um, um, I think that the best thing would be to organize a meeting. I think that the best thing would be to organize a meeting. Yeah, if you could do that. I think that the best thing would be to organize, notice you can spell it with an S or a Z, you know, whatever we're doing, American or, or, or English, organize um, a meeting. Good. Right, Shinobi, there's a lovely effort to use some interesting vocabulary, okay? So, qui vaut mieux, um, it would be worth more, it would be a good idea. Qui vaut, right, so it would be qui vaudrait, yeah, vaudrait, yeah, okay, lovely. Um, I'm liking how McClucky, I've liked how you've done it in a different order. Can I uh, remind you? that la meilleure has a feminine spelling. So let's go through them. So Shinobi, uh, je pense qu'il vaut mieux ou qu'il vaudrait mieux d'organiser un rendez-vous. Now, rendez-vous is lovely. You've got the correct gender. Well done. But une réunion would be more business-like. Un rendez-vous would be less business-like. Michael, je pense que la meilleure chose spelled correctly with the feminine serait d'organiser une réunion with the capital, uh, with, with the accent all in place. Lovely. McClucky, je pense que le, again, McClucky notice la meilleure chose, la meilleure chose, okay? So can we have a little conversation about chose? Une chose is feminine, but quelque chose is masculine. So how would I say something? Uh, no, Shinobi, you were great. Je pense qu'il vaudrait mieux d'organiser. So you got your vaudrait spelling right, yeah, but I would still need il vaudrait mieux. Okay. Vaudre, by the way, guys, is the verb which is used from, which is valoir, to be worth. But when in French you say, I'm worth it, as in L'Oréal, yeah, L'Oréal, you sort of shake your head like, you know, like these daft bitches do. And you basically say L'Oréal, parce que je le vaux bien. Yeah. Um, yes, but um, careful, Shano, um, we don't say, we don't say, female, that's like the female, as in of the species, we say feminine. Yeah, or feminine, okay? Lovely, so look what you said, masculine uh, or neutre, what we say, neutral, masculine. So it would be feminine and masculine. Can I also quickly acknowledge that there's a feminine and a masculine of both the masculine words and the feminine words? So you could say a masculine man and a feminine man and a masculine woman and a feminine woman. Une femme féminine, une, une femme masculine, un garçon masculin, un garçon féminin. You know, there's a, you know, there's a, hi, John Khan, lovely to see you. So, can you all write for me something special and something interesting? Something special and something interesting.
Something special and something interesting. No, McClukey. Well done for getting the accent on the E. Lovely. So I can. See, so great. So you've shown me what I need. Get uh, Right. So a couple of things. A couple of things. A couple of things. Right. So Ajahn Khan. Right. So quelque uh, chose de spécial et quelque chose. Yes, um, Rick, if you just give me one second, let me just deal with what we've got and then I'll ask that, okay? Um, uh, right, pause. So, good, right, okay, so here we go. What am I trying to say? We are saying with quelque chose that it will be using a masculine adjective. So that is so uh, something, something pretty, quelque chose de beau, like c'est beau, quelque chose de bien, quelque chose de, you, you know, the same with someone, quelqu'un de. So the first rule here is that we need a de, and I think a couple of you have just realized that. You need quelque chose de, quelqu'un de, okay? So if you're in a shop, what are you after? Oh, I'm after something special for, you know, my wife, whatever. Je, je cherche quelque chose de spécial. Masculine, as we've said, yeah, quelque chose de. So make sure that your eye, when you're looking at your adjective, honestly, honestly, can distinguish whether you're writing a masculine or a female adjective, okay? So I just need to move the screen because it's looking at my, <laughs> my eyes and not my mouth. So quelque chose d'intéressant. Lovely those of you that have noticed as well, I deliberately gave you two adjectives which contain eh, so spécial, intéressant. Yes, yeah, so we've got to really remember, if I'm going in my mouth very quickly via eh, unless it's es, et, or a few other exceptions, I'm going to have to have eh. So, quelque chose d'intéressant, quelque chose de spécial, okay? Uh, lovely, Sean Obi, je cherche quelque chose de spécial. Right, so, Rick Cortez, um, is it okay to use je pense instead of générer to ask something? I don't quite understand your question, Rick, because je pense is I think, um, and générer is I would like. So, uh, did, you, did you mean, is it okay to use générer rather than je voudrais? Is that what you mean? If you could just write your thing out again. Hi, Priya. Lovely to see you. Right, so back onto our business letter. Rick, by all means, write out your question. Um, and any of you, any other questions you have, don't just wait for the translation that we're doing. By all means, ask other questions you've got on stuff that comes to your mind. Yeah, don't, stuff that comes to mind. That was in English. Stuff that comes to mind, um, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it, it's, it's an open class. So any other doubts you've got, ask me. If I think it can be dealt with in a video, I'll tell you. Otherwise, we'll deal with it. So anything else that's bothering you, tell me. Right, so back to our business. So I'm sorry that you've had to wait. Je suis désolé que vous ayez dû attendre. Uh, okay, no, Rick. Response is I think. Um, I'm thinking of a coffee, like as in what do you fancy? I'm thinking of a coffee. It's a bit of an odd way of asking for it, although not wrong. And that would be je pense à un café. Je prends, I think you're thinking of je prends. Je prends. Yeah, or I will take. Je prendrai, is that what you're taking? So you're right, you've heard the right en. Yeah, so for those of you that clearly understand the difference between penser and prendre, Rick's right. You can obviously use prendre for like, I will have, moi je prendrai le, yeah, so don't forget that. Um, uh, lovely. Uh, and amener, again, you've combined two verbs. Use aimerait and amener. Amener is to take a person somewhere, bring a person somewhere rather, and aimerait would like, okay? Um, Rick, I would, I will take, je prendrai, I would like, j'aimerais, okay? Um, no, it wouldn't, Lolva, absolutely not at all. Good question, it needs the duh. It's not being fancy, it's, it's compulsory French, okay? So I think the best thing would be to organize a meeting. Je pense que la meilleure chose serait, AIT, d'organiser uh, une uh, réunion as soon as possible as soon as possible. Can I have as soon as possible? Très bientôt, very soon, but that's not quite what I want. Good, aussitôt, with accent, que possible. Um, not incorrect. Shall have you to hear that, but you know, aussitôt que possible, okay? Um, uh, as soon as. So this is basically, 
Mike, that's as quickly as possible, which is not... Um, uh, right, let's, let's explain. So this is not by definition wrong, what some of the stuff I'm seeing, but let's make sure. When we have a sentence, so Luke is as uh, tall as his brother, okay? Uh, which it depends on the brother, actually. One's an inch taller, one's an inch smaller. So Luke is as tall as his brother. So there are two as's in English. There's what I like to call the adjective as, and there's what I like to call the comparative as. Uh, so we'll call them, uh, we'll call it the comparative as, okay? So basically, your adjective as, A, 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 yeah? Uh, a, 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 adjective as possible. Adjective as possible. So that means when you are using as before an adjective, yeah, um, you're going to have aussi. This will often be translated as so if you're using the word, if you're stopping there. So, oh, I, di I didn't realize Luke was so weird. <laughs> Je ne m'étais pas rendu compte que Luke était aussi bizarre. All the classes were so interesting. Que les cours étaient aussi intéressants. Okay? The comparison as, or the, the comparative as, is going to be co. So, uh, Luke is as tall as his brother. Lovely, Londa. Exactly. Luke est aussi grand. Luke est aussi, Luke est aussi grand. Luke est aussi grand que son frère. Lovely. Lovely. So, as early as possible. Early is a weird word in French. So, if we're on time, would be à l'heure. If we were in advance, like de bonne heure. Yeah. Tôt is what we do here. So, as um, like plus tôt, earlier, plus tard, later, so aussi tôt que possible. Yeah, aussi tôt que possible. While we're there, plus tôt is earlier. Yeah, plus tôt. Plus tôt joined is instead. Yeah, when you've not got an instead of. Yeah. Yes, again, Priya, it's how it works in context, but that is ahead. So that is early, as in kind of like, you know, we're early. We were supposed to start at. 10 o'clock, but we're here at quarter two. On était, comm on était censé commencer à, à 15 heures, mais uh, on, a, on a commencé à uh, whatever, 45, on le cas. Okay? Great. So, um, um, as early as possible, aussi tôt que possible. Okay? Um, um, uh, my secretary will contact you during the week. My secretary will contact you during the week. To translate, so my secretary will contact you during the So, first things first, you bunch of misogynist pigs. I never said, I never said this secretary was, was, uh, was a lady. You know, it could be a male secretary. Uh, so, uh, lovely. So, let's have a little. <laughs> so, basically, there are some jobs in French which are gendered. And there are some people who have who attempt to try and make them sound feminine so that they don't just sound masculine. And that's interesting. And that's something that's changing in French. Um, I remember when I was younger, uh, living in Paris for a while near uh, Madame Le Juge, masculine, the judge. But, you know, obviously now that people will often say la for a lot of these jobs. Secrétaire is a word that can be un secrétaire and une secrétaire. So why am I interested in the spelling of this? Because I always say it's this above the line, below the line, eh or e. Uh. So in English it's secretary, and in French it's secrétaire. Okay? So mon secrétaire or ma secrétaire. Notice we've also got mon assistant and mon assistant feminine. So can I point out to you that mon assistant either way will be mon, even if it's a feminine one, because of the open mouth. 
So my happy my, my assistant will contact you during the week. Mon assistant, woman, or mon assistant vous contactera pendant la semaine. We are going to, so what did we do, McClukey? So is going to contact you. That's fine, but that's more of an immediate tense, McClukey. So can I remind you, will contact, re raron. Re raron. McClukey, if you don't know why it's going to be that tense or you don't know how to conjugate it, drop, drop me an email, logiclanguagelearning at gmail.com, and I will send you the future videos in a pack. Okay? Uh, Alex, ma secrétaire vous contactera, beautiful, uh, dans la semaine, or pendant la semaine, durant, no, durant, no, okay, uh, so mon secrétaire vous contactera, that's would contact, no, that is the vous form of would contact, Priya, so there's no room for rie there, because it's neither a vous, neither is it in would, okay, so be a little bit careful choosing will and would, okay, uh, I just looked at to myself and I thought, why have I written my ass, but I understand now, mon ass, as in mon assistant, great, okay, um, um, now, I'd like you to type what you would type to end a French letter, which is comedy because a French letter in old slang used to be a condom. So there you go. But if you were, if you were ending a French letter, what would you, what would you, let's say it was a letter, let's say it was a written letter rather than an email, hypothetically. So gold yellow on works for an email. Okay, lovely, lovely, lovely. And it really is, you know, pretty universal. What is the standard expression that you can use? Uh, that's interesting as well. But what's the standard expression that you find yourself using in a business letter, which is really important for you to learn? Any ideas? No? So, I'm going to pop up a link for you to watch and those of you who are watching at a, um, uh, a later time. Um, uh, it's the link I often give people when they, we do this. It's just from a website on law and finance and all this kind of stuff. It's just French formality. But the one that you use as standard really, 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 really uh, is, like, I can't tell you how genuinely omnipresent this is, is, uh, je vous prie d'agréer, madame ou monsieur, whatever, mes salutations distinguées. Now, this is basically... Okay, uh, distingué is obviously distinguished. Je vous prie. Now, prier is a verb you're familiar with, as in je t'en prie. I, so, thank you very much. Oh, je t'en prie. Yeah, you know, you, you're welcome. Prier, à la base, you know, basically is, is, is to pray. But notice in Old English, like I know some of you are coming here in English as a second language, which is fantastic and impressive. I know some of you are from regions of the world where it, a more modern English is spoken. But, you know, um, I pray thee, I pray you. My lady, imagine that you're sort of listening to old English. So prier is to kind of, I beseech, it's to ask. It's a formal, you know, it's a formal way of asking for stuff. Um, see that in commands, like on vous prie de ne pas, we ask you to not, okay? So je vous prie d'agréer. Agréer is not to agree. That would be se mettre d'accord, put yourself in agreement. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so it would be, um, agréer would be to like formally accept. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm, I'm asking you very kindly to form accept my. So it is very, 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 sort of, you know, whatever. But it gets used. Okay. I'm a little less advanced for the live class. Any base videos I should start with website books I should read. So Deepesh, um, that's fine. Just um, um, drop me, send me a WhatsApp, Deepesh, and I will just send you a voice file explaining what to do. Yeah, drop me a, a WhatsApp. The number is O. Oh. Plus four four seven eight nine nine seven three two eight three eight. And um, we 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 do. Um, uh, yes, Deepesh. I'm not going to say send me a WhatsApp and then not give you the number. <laughs> so, uh, um, thank you. Two words. Brilliant. Right. Bless you. So good. 
So, uh, so je vous prie d'agréer. I can see why this would scare the shit out of people because it's a real tough expression. But um, um, uh, yes, you can. You can send messages. Of course, you can. Um, on put is on put. O n p e u t. Good. So um, uh, lovely. I assumed you were. You can. Oh, je suis d'origine indienne. Je suis d'origine indienne. Yeah, d'origine indienne. I'm of Indian origin. Okay. Great. Uh, lovely. So moving on to our next thing. Dear sir, um, uh, my wife and I uh, have decided to uh, visit your establishment. Dear sir, my wife and I have decided to visit your establishment. So we're changing emails, basically. Dear sir, my wife and I have decided to visit your establishment. Almost, McClukey, there's a good point, and I'd understand you. The point is, would I understand you in French? Yes, I would, but that's not quite right. Give you guys a little bit longer, because it's a bit of a long and a bastardish one, so I'll give you guys a bit longer. I can hear Mike's brain beavering away on this. Cher monsieur, moi et ma femme avaient décidé de visiter Right, so, a couple of things. No bad work from anybody. And the point is, I would have understood every single one of them. I'd have, I'd have you know, that, that's the point, okay? So, uh, what am I saying? Let's go one by one. So, ma f my wife and I, ma femme et moi. So well done. So obviously the difference in English, and I'm not patronizing anybody, and it's a mistake we all make in, in slang English, but the reason you say my wife and I as opposed to my wife and me is it's that we're doing the verb. So um, people always try and be posh and say my wife and I, and it's like, well, it's only your wife and I if you're going to bloody do something. So um, uh, they gave, um, you know, um, a huge bottle of champagne to my, 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 my husband and me, okay? Um, or me and my husband, it will often become. But it would have to be that because we're the objects of the sentence as opposed to, you know, my husband and I, we used to do this, okay? So the point would be that ma femme et moi, lovely. Now, let's just have a little cheeky conversation here without me sort of teasing any of you. But if I said Luke and Craig have spoken, okay? whatever, okay? I'm going to use the have in my sentence. And can I point out to you that the oral thing of dropping in a repeat subject, okay, is doable orally, but be very careful in letters. It doesn't always come across as well. So you can say like, um, uh, um, uh, well, Craig and I, we, we went to the cinema. Craig et moi, on est allé au cinéma. Okay, fine, okay. Uh, okay um, uh, whatever, um, oh, no, that's not very good. Um, Luke and Paul went to the cinema. Luke et Paul, ils sont allés au cinéma. So you would drop to this comma or pause idea of then popping in, you know, an another thing. But don't forget, you sometimes just need to do the person and then their verb, okay? Um, that would be Luke and... Um, Craig spoke to each other, which is lovely French, but you know, um, different. Okay, so um, so the point I'm trying to make, Shino, is that that is fine. Luke et Craig se parlent. Okay, what am I about? Luke et Craig se sont parlé. Se sont parlé. It's um, it's it's plural. Okay, se sont parlé. Okay. Um, but the point is, when you use this orally written, when you use this written you're going to have to make sure that you've got the right auxiliary. You're just going to have to also get into the habit of using the correct auxiliary. So be really basically good on they. Be good on using en, be good, in, be good on using sans, be good on using ce sans. 
So the men finished eating. You know, the boys finished eating. The women finished eating. Les garçons ont fini. Yeah, on. Les garçons, ils ont fini. So what I'm saying is don't just be dependent on going, ils ont. It's fine, but there are times we need to be able to say it without the subject pronoun. The, the, boy, the, 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 the boys left. Les garçons sont partis. Be comfortable going into the B form. You know, les garçons, ils sont partis. Fine. Or elles sont partis. Les filles, fine. But make sure you can go straight into the verb. With ce sont. So um, Luke and Craig spoke to each other. Luke and Craig se sont parlé. Be comfortable going into the they forms of, of anything, okay? Um, next point, final point on this. If you're talking about my wife and I, Luke and Craig are a they. Um, you and your wife are a vous, yeah? But my wife and I, what, what are we? Are we a je, are we a tu, are we a nous, are we a vous, are we a il? Write down all of you, which, which one we're going to be. Which one are we going to be? Are we a je, are we a tu, are we an il, are we an elle, are we a nous, or are we a vous? We are a nous. My wife and I. My wife and I. What are we going to be? Okay, so some of you are interpreting this as in like, well, what would I be? No, but I'm, some of you are like, oh, well, that's a you guys. But what I'm saying is if I was speaking, my wife and I, we have, do you follow my point? It's going to be a nous. So anytime you do this shit, you're going to, so my wife and I have spoken with the manager, ma femme et moi, avant parlé avec le directeur, le gérant, fine. So it's fine, you will often hear ma femme et moi, nous avons parlé, ou ma femme et moi, on a parlé, okay? Orally in French, you might hear ma femme et moi, a parlé, but that's not great. You, if you're going to use your en, yeah, your third person uh, replacement um, for, you know, the, uh, for the nous, you need to hear the en. Don't just go straight into the um, uh, the ah from ma, ma femme et moi a parlé. No, no, you know, ma femme et moi on a parlé avec ou ma femme et moi avons parlé, okay? Um, it's just better, it just sounds better, okay? So basically what I'm saying is my wife and I have decided all of this long going around, you know, the houses to explain this. Ma femme et moi avons décidé de whatever, what did I say? So to visit your establishment, good, visiter votre établissement. Can I remind you that établissement is from établir on one of my themes for today, for writing, for business, is to look for, just say the words, eh, look at my mouth. I'm sorry, établir, we open the mouth, eh, we open the mouth, eh. When we open the mouth, we're gonna need an accent, okay? Unless it's E-R-E-S-E-T or one of my regular, okay? So établir, okay? Visiter, fine, because we're visiting a place, yeah? But I'm going to go and visit Mike in Ireland. Je vais rendre visite à quelqu'un, yeah? Rendre visite or aller voir. So don't visiter your grandmother, for example, okay? Lovely. Uh, L'olve, nous. Lovely. So ma femme et moi, nous avons décidé de, 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 de visiter votre établissement. Notice orally, anytime you've got a re, that you're going to go votre établissement. Yeah, you're going to go votre établissement, all right? You're not like four years, quatre ans, not quatre ans, okay? Um, 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 could you possibly inform me if it were possible to have the same room as last year? I know we're being polite as fuck, but off we go. So could you possibly inform me if it were uh, possible. I'm using possible twice there, which is a bit dumb, but um, uh, to have the same room as last year. Don't feel the need to write possibly twice. If you could just write it once, could you possibly inform me if it were possible? Could you inform me if it were possible? That would be fine. Or actually, no, I'm going to change it. Could you possibly inform me if I could have, if we could, if we could have the same room as last year? All right. Could you possibly inform me if we could have the same room as last year?
Almost, Michael. Almost, almost, almost. Hang on, before we have a on this, see. Oh, actually, no, that's fine. Yes. No, that's fine, actually. Avant la même chambre que l'année dernière. Voyez-vous, j'insiste, si c'est possible d'avoir la même chambre. Almost, Shinobi, not bad. Shinobi, you've got a real gift for creating stuff in an interesting way. Uh, okay, good. Some of these are really interesting. I'm going to talk about them all in a second. I'll just give you a couple more, more, more um, seconds. Good. So for those of you watching thinking, damn, I couldn't say this kind of stuff. This is the point of the classes. If you just wanted to write, can I have the same room that I had last year? Or can we have room number 245? Um, fine, obviously, you know, est-ce que nous pouvons avoir? Fine, fine, fine. No one's saying there's anything wrong with that, okay? Alex, I feel there's been a bit of looking up on your part rather than knowing that, but I don't mind because looking up is learning. Right, so I'm going to start correcting. So the first thing to remember here is that could is a deceitful little shit in English because it goes in two directions. Pourriez-vous possiblement m'informer si on pourrait avoir... Okay, great. Ajahn Khan, so there's some lovely, lovely French going on there. Hang on, pourriez-vous possiblement... Right, okay, lovely, lovely. So nobody write anything else. Please, 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 please. Can you not write anything else? No? Um, so that I've got, I've got time to correct it. So there's a couple of things going on here. The first thing going on here is that could is from the verb to be able to. So most of you got that. That's great. Okay. So, so, so from pouvoir. The second thing to work out is that pouvoir is that could, sorry, lies in English. There's a future conditional could and there's a past good. So for example, all last year I could tell I was going to, whatever. Or, oh, if you came around my house, we could go for a nice walk and a glass of wine. Uh, Luke likes red. Nine Manstone Road, London, NW23XH. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so be careful with you could. So if you're talking about a could that hasn't happened yet, oh, I could help. Je pourrais. You're going into the future block of pouvoir. You're going into the... Uh, the pool, okay? And most of the time, if you're not comfortable with would, could, and should, email me, logiclanguagelearning at gmail.com, and I will send you the block of videos, all of which deal with would, could, and should. And as Mike and people that work with me will tell you, would, have, could, have, should, have. So, j'aurais pu, j'aurais dû, etc. So, that's the first thing. So, could you tell me? Yeah? So, be careful. If I was saying, when you were a kid, could you see the sea from your house? That's a different could. That's were you able to, you know, pouviez-vous, you know, est-ce que vous pouviez? Could you help me next? Or, or, or tu pouvais or pouvais-tu? Um, or est-ce que tu pouvais? If you're talking about could in the future, strictly speaking, the conditional, you're going to be going in the wood tense. So can we just make absolutely clear? So don't just let could take you there, right? So let's look at some of these. Pourriez-vous, good. So first thing with the would tense is going to be the, the, the I-E-Z and the, the, the hyphen for any inversion. So est-ce que vous pourriez, fine. Pourriez-vous with a hyphen, fine. If I do an inversion, that means if the verb comes before the person doing the verb, in French, I need a hyphen. Yeah, I need the line between it. Okay. So pourriez-vous m'informer? Let's look one by one. Si nous pouvions avoir la même chambre que l'année dernière. Now, let's look at Mike's one. Mike's one is fine. Lovely. Feminine year. La même chambre, accent on même. We could is actually, when are we going to have this room? We're going to have this room in the future. But the fact is, one of the partnerships that you will use all the time in French is something in the could, something in the, in the, in, in the was. Something in the conditional, sorry, something in the conditional, something in the was. If I spoke German, I would live in Berlin. Si je parlais, was tense, l'allemand, j'habiterais à Berlin. Yeah, or si je parle allemand, you can choose to use the, the article or not. If I had spoken German, I would have lived. Si j'avais parlé allemand, si j'avais parlé l'allemand, j'aurais habité ou j'aurais vécu, whatever, à Berlin. So you're going to use as pairings 
was and would. One of them needs to be in the was, one of them needs to be in the would. Quite specifically, one of them needs to be in the imperfect, one of them needs to be in the condition. So although Mike having this room would in theory be in the, con in the future, if he were going to have it, you know, him and his lovely wife were going to get it, it is in this pairing, you know, could you do, say, if I were able to have this room, you know? Good. So, pourriez-vous m'informer si nous pouvions avoir la même chambre que l'année dernière? Shinobi, pourriez-vous... Lovely. La gentillesse is great, but what are you saying? Are you going to say, can you... The, the, the courtesy? So, it's like, you know, would you have the courtesy? You know, uh, you know so use gentillesse by all means. So, auriez-vous, would you have the, the courtesy to tell me? I mean, that's very formal French, but you could. But again, just make sure you're pairing it with something logical. Okay, auriez-vous la, gentil auriez la gentillesse de m'informer? So again, Shinobi, if I've said, if it, so would you do some shit? Would you tell me if it were possible? So some of you, particularly American uh, speakers, aren't so hot on using were, and that's fine already. So for example, Luke was happy. If Luke were happy, that's hypothetical you it should be if i were you so be mindful of what we're doing that's normally telling me if i've got this were going on that i'm going to need my was tense if you don't get why we use the conditional and the was in pairings and this kind of thing please email me okay lovely shine is auriez-vous hyphen hyphen auriez-vous la gentillesse but it's very formal hyphen because you're inverting so pourriez-vous m'informer si nous where are we going pourriez-vous auriez-vous la auriez-vous la gentillesse de m'informer si c'était possible d'avoir la même chambre, accent required on même. Qu'on a eu, I'm going to need a relative pronoun, Shinobi. I'm going to need that we had, and I'm going to need an E on the end of U, yeah, because it's the room that we had, so the feminine came before the past word. If you don't understand why that needs an E, drop me an email individually, all of you, I will send you the video on that. Uh, uh, um, la chambre qu'on a eu, with a sneaky E on the end. Uh, l'année dernière, you can say dernier before words. Yeah, the last girl to have won the competition before they closed it down, whatever, la dernière fille. If it's last in a line, it would be dernier or dernière. But if it's last pertaining to now, if it's relating to now, so last year, last week, last whatever month, you know, l'année dernière, uh, you know, whatever, uh, la semaine dernière. Same with prochain. The next girl comes in here, I'm going to give a bunch of roses to whatever, la prochaine fille. Last year, sorry, next year, la semaine, l'année prochaine, la semaine prochaine. You're going to put prochaine afterwards. So when it's to do with time, to do with now, it's going to go the other way around than if it's just next in a list. So uh, la, la même chambre qu'on a eu, that we had, qu'on a eu uh, l'année dernière, accent on the E, dernière graph, good. So that was Shinobi's, but I'd, I'd have understood it and it's lovely French. Not quite correct, but lovely. McClucky said, est-ce que, so lovely, I always like a question with est-ce que, I just prefer them to inversions, so est-ce que vous pourriez, fine, est-ce que vous pourriez, careful, which ending are we going to, so well done McClucky, you're thinking pourrait, yeah, for, you know, but basically let's understand, let's explain what's going on, so pourrait is you will be able to, you plural will be able to, or you formal, pourriez is you would be able to, yeah, so make sure your mouth knows which one it's doing. So, est-ce que vous pourriez, uh, where are we, McClucky? Est-ce que vous pourriez m'informer? Link, me and informer, yeah, me and informer, m'informer, M apostrophe. Uh, if we could, again, we're going to have to go. So, could you let me know if we can have the same room? But it's, if we could, yeah, if we were able to, it's this combination of the would and the, um, the was. And I'm going to do more on that next week, I think. There is a class next week. Um, I'm going to do more on that again. So, if we could have si on pouvait, yeah, okay. Oh, on pourrait whatever's going on, whichever way around. Avoir, if we could have. Yes, on pourrait avoir. So when you're speaking French, don't go, yay, I've done the bit of grammar, and then forget the other bit. So si on pourrait avoir, si on pouvait avoir la même chambre que l'année dernière. Lovely. Uh, oh, no, hang on. I'm, um, on avoir la même chambre que l'année dernière. And again, um, uh, McClucky, vowels, 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 vowels. L'année dernière. Yeah? Starts with an open mouth, so L apostrophe, yeah? L'année dernière. Alex, pourriez-vous me faire savoir? Lovely, so to let me know, yeah? Uh, si c'était possible, if it were possible, rather than if it would be possible. Again, I've got to get the partnerships correct, yeah? 
Euh, pour nous d'avoir la même chambre que l'année dernière, again lovely, but I need a double, I need an accent on the E in dernière. Ajahn Khan, pourriez-vous hyphen, hyphen, yeah, hyphen between the two because it's an inversion, yeah. Pourriez-vous possiblement m'informer, lovely join and m'informer, si on pouvait you know, euh, avoir la même chambre que, que on a eu, qu'on a eu l'année dernière, again, année, année dernière, wrong order again. Priya, Pourriez-vous, um, don't say sorry, I John, there's some love. So every single one of you there has written something brilliant. It's not totally correct, but there's some really, Mike's was great. But could you, could you basically acknowledge that all of you have been starting to get into some really good patterns? It's just we need to obviously make them perfect. Okay. Um, uh, guys, those of you that are watching this video after the fact and just think that's a bit freaking hard for me, can you tell me? You know, if I can have, est-ce que tu peux me dire si je pouvais avoir? But if he says je peux avoir, okay. So I, I'm not doing an accent like to mock anybody. It's basic. I'm just saying you could do it in a really basic way, okay? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Great, okay? So, bonus few minutes. We've done the hour, but I'm just going to carry on a little bit, okay? Um, it's um, um, the room. So, the room made us... No, the room made the room made me happy. The room pleased. Uh, pleased us. Two different things. Thank you, Alex. And, and don't get me wrong. Like I've got no problem with with with. I'm not obsessed with accents when you speak. This is a, this is basically just because we're doing some stuff that was great for typing. What, what am I interested in when you speak when it comes to accents? The fact that you pronounce it correctly. So use your accents when you're reading so that you're generating all these lovely sounds to then remember saying the words that way. Like those of you that have, um, and you're all welcome to, to purchase it if you haven't already. I have a vocab um, series of, uh, of podcasts available. And the, the, the point is that you're just copying the sound on the vowels. Yeah. So by all means, use accents when you read to create the correct vowel, but don't be obsessed about, about them written down rather than not expressing yourself in French. It's just because this is what we're here for, you know? So um, uh, can you write for me? The room made me happy. The room pleased us. Now, I know pleased us is trying is a little bit frangly, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to push that on purpose because I want, I want to talk about that for a second in our bonus last 10 minutes. So Priya, you are using the correct verbs, but your tenses and your spellings are, are all over the place. Ajahn, you're, you've done something lovely in the one verb, the other verb's wrong. Mokluki, correct verb, wrong tense, wrong tense, uh, in, incorrect spelling of the second tense. Shinobi, wrong verb, first, first time. It's correct verb, second time, but think how many uh, people are, you know. Right, so. The room made me happy. So first things first, I can't stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. The verb to use with something making you happy is rendre. It renders me an adjective. Ça me rend content. Ça m'a rendu content. Whatever. So let's have a little look at what we're doing. When you write, and if you don't get this, I don't want you to think about this when you're speaking, but if you use verbs which are listed in the dictionary as having a quelqu'un, they are indirect. When you look, use verbs that are listed in the dictionary as having quelqu'un, so for example, you know, um, voir quelqu'un, to see somebody, they are direct. If your thing, this is a little bit like the room I had earlier, comes first, the person is going to agree with it. So the room made me happy. La chambre m'a rendu. R-E-N-D-U if it's a guy, because it made me and I'm a guy. La chambre m'a rendu with an E if it's a girly. Okay? 
content ou contente, respectively. Oh, that's going to make me happy. Ça va me rendre content. Okay. Um, uh, uh, you know, you're going to. Um, um, that that is what's going to happen. Okay. Um, uh, the room pleased us. The verb to please is, and if you look at this in your own time when you watch this back, it's plaire à quelqu'un. So it is indirect. So la chambre nous a plu. Yeah, nous a plu. That wouldn't have an s on it because it's pleased us, because it's an indirect verb, right? Um, it's not. It needs to be pre a previous direct object. A couple of things on plaire. Everybody goes, oh God, what's plaire? A couple of things on plaire. First things first. All of you know the word plaire. You use it every time you speak French. S'il te plaît, s'il vous plaît. See you, McClucky. Lovely to see you. Take care. Email me for any question. So if you've got s'il te plaît, s'il vous plaît, notice you're not saying if you please, if you please, because otherwise it'd be a different form of play for the two people, isn't it? So it's s'il te plaît, s'il vous plaît. It's the same play. So if it's if it to you pleases, if it's to you plural pleases. The verb is plaire. Play, 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 plaisant, plaisir, plaisir. Okay. The past is the new neighbors are back. You can hear them. They're always shouting. Uh, the uh, the past of which is plus. Okay. So ça m'a plu. Ça m'a plu. Okay. Good, Mike. Next thing. Don't confuse plaire with pleuvoir to rain. For some reason, people always, people always, always, um, people always, um, yeah, people always get, uh, let me get the conjugator up. Let me show you. So I've given you plaire. Uh, people always, for some reason, people always get plaire and pleurer, to cry, and uh, see, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to up for you. Uh, um, okay, the past participles are the same. Yeah. But apart from that, the verb is different. Yeah. Good. So next thing. When else do we use Blair? Those of you that have spent any time in Spain, um, uh, Lolva, I'll come back to that in a sec, but basically, faire du bien is, ah, oh, that does some good. That, do, that, that does me some good. Ça fait du bien. Ça me fait du bien. Ça lui fait du bien. Faire du bien. Ça fait du bien. Yeah. Notice it. Whenever you've got an expression, check out how you do the he and they. Is it ça le fait or ça lui fait? In this case, it's ça lui fait du bien. Check out the they and the he anytime you've got an expression, right? Go to the dictionary, look it up, like the links I've given you, check out, do this for yourselves, look on the right and look whether it's called a quelqu'un or, you know, quelqu'un, so whether it tells you whether it's direct or indirect. And if you don't get why that's important and you don't get um, why that's going to give you all the grammar you need for the he and the they. So that makes, that pleases him, that pleases them. If you don't honestly get that, email me and I will send you the video which explains that because it's possibly one of the most completely fucking useful things you can do when learning French is to understand when you're using lui and, lui and le and a and no a. So, um, and, and as a matter of course, you need to get into the habit of doing it. So um, to answer your question, Lolva, is um, what's the difference between faire du bien is, oh, Oh, putain, ça fait du bien. That, taking off my socks when it's been really warm and you just want to sit and relax. Taking off my T-shirt, relaxing, bare-chested. I'm not happy unless I'm naked. So, so that will be that. Um, or having a nice stretch when you've been driving a lot. Ça fait du bien. Makes me happy is just generically that makes me happy. Okay. So next thing with plaire is it's the verb to please. But you, if any of you have spent any time in Italy or Spain, you will have come across the verbs me gusta, a mi me gusta, or mi piace, yeah? And these are verbs where you are saying, this thing pleases me, yeah? So if you spent time in Spain, so I like, whatever, what should we say, what should we say? Um, I like Spanish food, a mi me gusta la comida española, whatever, school Spanish, okay? You're saying, it pleases me, Spanish food, uh, um, Spanish food, okay? You're not saying I like. It's the standard way of saying I like, but it's that the same as in Italian, okay? Yeah, so if you're saying, uh, you know, I like something in Italy, you say mi piace, it's, it to me is pleasing. And that's the same in French. You can use that with plaire. So for example, um, the I liked the film, le film m'a plu, the film pleased me. Yeah, it's a, any of you that are doing exams, it's a bit of an interesting, or, alternative to writing MA. It's really interesting. But 
remember that, and I've done a video on that, so by all means, drop me an email. But the other thing to remember is we do not do it with people because plaire with people means to find them sexually attractive. So, for example, I like Mike, uh, you know, je l'aime bien. Okay, don't here get debating with it, like or love. I've explained that in another video. And again, email me for the link. But, but, but I like Mike, okay? I like apples, you know, j'aime les pommes, fine. Apples please me, les pommes me plaisent. I mean, it's a bit of a, a weird way of saying it, but you, 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 you could do it in that context too, okay? Um, Mike me play. Mike pleases me, would be, I find Mike physically attractive. And he's a lovely man, <laughs> but I don't mix business and pleasure. So the point, I mean, you know, all jokes aside, that's what you'd say. So if you said, I, she's hot, you'd say, she pleases me, elle me plaît. Doesn't mean she's doing anything. It's not a sexist comment. It doesn't mean she's doing anything to try and please me or she's being promiscuous or anything. So I, they, I find them attractive, il me plaît. Oh, mais putain, elle me plaît, quoi. You know, I really like her. She's, she's attracted to me. Il me plaît. Il me plaît. Yeah? Uh, so, now, Doug, what did the pleasing? This is my point. The verb plaire is what's going to do the freaking pleasing. So, the room did the pleasing. We didn't. It's a la chambre nous a plu. L'année dernière, la chambre, celle qu'on a eu, the one that we had, celle qu'on a eu l'année dernière, nous a beaucoup plu, nous a plu, pleased us. So, moral of this story is, if you're using plaire, the person, the thing using the verb plaire is the thing that somebody likes, not the person doing the liking. Is that clear, Douglas? So, for example, if I said, um, the, uh, the hotel, we really like the hotel, yeah, on a beaucoup aimé l'hôtel. Nous avons beaucoup aimé. Or oh, l'hôtel nous a plu. Yeah, okay. So it's just something nice to have. Now, all of you, don't forget with any verb, plus a imperfect. Yeah, ça me plaisait. But it's just you know description of your emotions, mental state. You know my my my, my thing. But just be careful with that. Good. So we've had a little bit of extra work on Claire. Um. Uh, just to finish then, um, so next time we will do some easier stuff with like, and we will do some easier stuff with uh, the was in the wood. So for those of you that want to watch those videos in advance for next time to really make sure you've got a head start, okay, because I will do a lot of work on wood, could, should, and was, and all this business last week. Um, uh, Shinobi, I'm going to try and keep to the same Sunday at the same the same time. But I'm also going to be introducing an earlier class because I'm, I'm missing my Aussies out and I teach a lot of Aussies and I don't want to like neglect them. So, um, you know, so there will be one at the same time on the Sunday more than likely and also one that will be a lot earlier, um, possibly on the Saturday morning. OK, um, but the point is uh, it will be dealing with that. So if you want to get the reading done for the class, if you want to get the videos in, drop me an email. Yeah. You know I love WhatsApp, but can you drop me an email because it's then easy to send you the videos. And then that way what I could do, and this goes for anybody watching this video before next week, you know, you know it's now the 19th of August 2018. If you're watching this video before, you know, the 28th, if you're watching this video this week uh, and you want to take part or even you want to watch the class having watched the correct videos, then drop me an email and I will give you those. Um, you know, thing. Um, Shinobi, I haven't sorted the Australian time out yet. So just to finish then, so the room that we had last week, um, so can you say for me, the one we had last year was beautiful. No, so, so um, no, say um, the one we had, the one we had last year, it was beautiful. The one we had last year, it was beautiful. Talking about a room. The one we had last year, it was beautiful. And I think we'll end after this. And if you could all click like, I'd, be much, I'd very much appreciate it as well. And if you're not subscribed, obviously do please subscribe. So the one we had last year, so talking about a room. Interesting grammar, Shinobi. You've got a lot of grammar, not always in the right place, but you've got a lot of grammar, but that's not quite right. So you're right with your first word. Have a little think about your second word. 
but you put your lane dernier in the right word order. Well done. Mike has got the right format, but the wrong gender of room. Right, so another five seconds. Right, so the one when you're pointing, yeah, with your finger or you're pointing with your mouth, that basically means you, avec la bouche, you know, you're indicating. Uh, right, oh, Priya, there's a big bad mistake in that. Right, okay, so, right, so off we go. So the point is, when you point, okay, when you point, uh, almost, almost, almost right. But another big mistake, Alex, same as Priya. So when you point, if, let me make this absolutely clear. If you don't have the proper word, if you have a proper word, you're going to use this. And the, you know, the room, whatever, la chambre that we had, great. This room, that room, we're going to use the word sub, set, set if it's masculine beginning with an object, at the beginning with an avowal or say yeah. So this room, said chambre, these people, say personne, this guy, ce mec, ce garçon, whatever, this object, masculine, open mouth, set objet, c -E -T. On the end of which you can have, uh, yes, I do uh, very much. That is exactly what I do. Uh, prepare people for the Delph, for the Delph and the Delph, particularly the Delph. The, um, uh, Ajan is asking about diplôme élémentaire de la langue française or diplôme avancé de la langue française. So absolutely I did, right? So, uh, so when you use these words, you can by all means, sorry, um, um, you can by all means um, add, um, um, you can by all means add a C or a LA, okay? So which boy, ce garçon C, ce garçon LA, email me, I don't can't we'll talk about it. Now it's not the moment, but absolutely I did, yeah? So basically, um, it's what I do. I'm a French teacher. So basically, um, this boy here, ce garçon là, this room, cette, cette chambre. You're not ob obliged to add C and là, but it kind of adds a bit of a directional quality. Which boy? Well, that boy, ce garçon là. Because this and that are basically the same word in French. You've only got C or là to, to make it one or the other. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, my email is on my, uh, is on my details for my YouTube. Yeah, and I, um, it's, so if you just click on the information for the page, it will come up there. Next thing, okay? Lovely, that's great, that's great, yeah? If you're not using the word, a word, so if you're not saying this boy, this girl, this eye, this shoulder, this one, that one, whatever, you're going to use these words. Celui, for a masculine, cell, ce, and cell, plural. But these Four things, which if you think about it, are surplus the word for him, surplus the word for her, surplus the word for them, uh, so object pronoun them, with them, and echo, and surplus the word for hell. So if you think about it, it's like you either say this boy or this him. That's what you're saying, this him, absolutely. Those four versions need something else. So what a, a few of you have used, have got correctly in your mind, is that you need a C or a la. So for example, which one do you want? So I'm walking with my lovely friend Keisha and we're in Paris and she said, and she goes, oh, those roses are lovely. And I say, oh, I'll buy you one. And she says, okay, which rose? And, 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 I, and she says that one, then sell la. Yeah, you can't just say sell. You need to just think about it. That one, this one, you need to, you need to give it a, some space. You need to place it in time and space. So what that means is you can either follow with si or la and be done with it, or you can use the relative pronouns ki or ke and say a freaking sentence. So the one, I really liked your dress, Keisha. Which one? The one, um, you know, that you wore for the opera. You know, celle que tu as porté, celle que tu as mise, mise feminine because of feminine dress pour l'opéra. Okay. So that would be that would be that. So the room that we had. La chambre qu'on a eu, the room, the one that we had, celle qu'on a eu. Yeah, celle 
Python à Uro que nous avons, que nous avons, que nous avons euh, eu, because it's talking about a feminine room. Yeah. I bet a lot of you don't like we had anyway or j'ai eu because you tend to hear j'avais for all kinds of reasons. So the one that we had, celle qu'on a eu, what was my original sentence? Somebody remind me before we finish. The one that we had, celle qu'on a eu. Right. Last year, l'année dernière, it was beautiful. No. I did a video on this this week and you clearly not watched this yet. It was, is going to talk about an adjective. Yeah, and adjectives as a rule use the il est, elle est method. So feminine room, elle était belle. Yeah, you can go with say in a in the moment ex exclamatory kind of way. Oh wow, regarde Mike, c'est beau. Um, I don't know why Mike and I are sharing the room again. I think it's because I fancied him earlier. He knows I'm joking. So basically, if I said, uh, if I said, uh, oh, like Mike has just written there, c'était magnifique. Okay. In the moment, socially, you can say sete. But if you're basically saying, oh, the room, it was lovely. La chambre, elle était. Yeah, you, you can use il and elle for the adjective, okay? Um, Father Christmas, he's fat. Le Père Noël, il est gros. The house is beautiful. La maison, elle est belle. Oh, look, it's beautiful. C'est beau. And my final comment of the day is this. If you're bloody using say, like with quelque chose, although we don't need a dirt afterwards, Will you please, for the love of God, remember that say, S C apostrophe E S T, takes the freaking masculine. You cannot in French say, no pun on say, you can't say, c'est belle. It doesn't exist. Oh, putain, regarde, c'est beau, ça. Oh, j'adore, c'est beau. Yeah? He, um, it's interesting, c'est intéressant. Even if you're talking about something feminine, oh, Paris, it's interesting, um, c'est intéressant. It's a feminine city, la ville. Yeah, okay. C'était beau. But, Priya, that would be in the moment, talking about it. So you can also say, um, uh, la chambre, uh, elle était belle. Okay? Toujours. You can never say, c'était belle. It doesn't exist. Okay? Cette piscine, c'est beau, lovely. Or, cette piscine, elle est belle. Yeah, elle est belle. Or, cette piscine est belle. But that's a bit, mm, cette piscine, elle est belle. Okay? Okay, good. So, any specific questions before we go about anything we've done specifically today? No? And by all means, if you think about them afterwards, email me. Um, 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 but the main things that we're trying to get across is the little bit of tightness, attention to detail with the ease. How are we starting to use the verb plaire? The combinations of the would and the was tenses. Um, uh, what was wrong with it? I don't quite remember what you wrote out, but number one, it, it would need that we had. Can I, the room that we, listen to English, the guy I know. Yeah, but if it's an object, so the guy that I know, the guy whom I know in more formal French, you're going to use que, okay? Uh, so I can't remember the original thing, was it the one that we had? Celle qu'on a eu, I did write that out, celle qu'on a eu l'année dernière, I did write that out, uh, that section out earlier. Uh, celle qu'on a eu, you're going to, uh, no, sorry, should I know, should I know be that's what I've said? You're either going to say celle-ci or celle-là and stop. Nothing else in your sentence after ci or la. Or you're going to go on with ki or que. So it could be a ki or a que. So the one who knows me, which girl? The one who knows me, celle qui me connaît. Yeah, the one I know, celle que je connais. Or celle-ci or celle-là. You can't do them all. Yeah, it's celle plus either the ki, either the que. You know, um or the one with which cell of I mean, you know, it can go off in another direction, but it's not going to be C and La and then a key and a cup. Hmm? So cell qu'on a eu l'année dernière. Celle qu'on a eu l'année dernière, elle était belle. Right, right, pause, pause, pause. Shinobi, cell is feminine. So if you are going to go straight from cell qu'on a eu l'année dernière, été, you haven't used say, so we've still got to stick to your adjectival rules. So cell qu'on a eu l'année dernière, été, belle, because of the feminine, cell qu'on a eu l'année dernière, elle était belle. 
or cell qu'on a eu l'année dernière, c'était beau. Yeah, okay, because it's like a social ob observation, all right? So you are either going to be, so what I'm basically saying is that all of you are really familiar with say because it's what we use in the moment, okay? It's what we use in the moment. It really, really is. Um, oh, putain, regarde, c'est beau ça. It's, it's beautiful. But if you're just saying, oh, the house is beautiful, la maison, elle est belle. I've done a video on that this week. It is literally called, cryptically, the difference between say and il est. So with this really confusing title, you still might be able to find it. So if you could have a little look. Um, um, who, no, Ajahn, don't be mean. We don't mock each other here. This is a nurturing space. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, um, if you're talking about Shinobi, <laughs> this is a nurturing space. Um, I mean it. I mean it. I will throw you out if you start criticizing other people. Like Shinobi has done some great work today. Okay, so I shall throw you over my knee and spank you, and you can pay me extra for that. So yeah, so we don't criticize people because we all learn at our own speed. Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. I think what you meant was yay, she got it. What you didn't fucking mean was finally she got it because if I found out you meant that, I'd be on your ass ever so far. So uh, I'm only kidding. So but we are a supportive environment and Shinobi has finally got that, as you've said yourself, but that's brilliant, okay? So um, I assumed that it was a, a guy. I know that you're a guy, so anyway. Anyway, you guys fight amongst yourselves, but the point is we are, um, my classes are strict, but my, that's so that your brain gets the live chat, your brain gets the, the live decision-making at the speed it needs to be. But as a person, we support each other, okay? So, um, great. So, uh, I will um, I will speak to you guys next week. Um, any place, um, um, I will just punch him clean in the face. Punch, pun, punch him clean in the face and it'll all be sorted, it'll be fine, okay. Um, so basically, it's lovely to see you all. I will see you next week. I'm gonna be starting to do the reading lists, which basically means if you know you're coming on the Sunday, or the Saturday, I will send you the videos that we're going to be pertinent for a lot of what we're doing. And we're not just going to do that, but we will have specific themes. Yeah. So if you want to be in the group or you know you're going to watch it at some point, drop me an email and I will send you the lists, videos that we're going to be referring to for the following week. All right. So do do that. All right. Um, can I remind you, those of you that haven't, um, uh, Ian, it's lovely to see you. Can I remind you, those of you that are just uh, as well, that if you haven't yet been interested in purchasing the vocab files, they are genuinely, I'm not pushing something that's piss poor, they are useful. So those of you that want to push your vocabulary, I have got that, okay? Um, um, oh, thank you, Priya, that's a really lovely thing to say. Um, um, I will see you guys same time next week. All right, thank you, Priya, thank you all of you. If you could click like if you haven't already done so, um, and again, if you want to express something that you find difficult, but you don't want to because, uh, you know, Ajahn Khan has made it like a really toxic atmosphere and you can't say anything, I'm only kidding, then do please drop me an email. Um, we haven't got that John Smith bastard from when we last had a class. He was criticizing it. Um, if you could basically let me know what you want covering in these classes. So if you're basic and you want some basic stuff going over, let me know in an email. All right. I'm going to go and drink copious amounts of red wine and I will see you, um, um, I will see you soon. Okay, and um, Mike, that's nice of Mike saying vocab videos are, are, are great value. All right guys, well then, email is, those of you that can't find it on the language, on the Logic Language Learning YouTube at gmail.com, Logic Language Learning at gmail.com. Brilliant, excellent. All right guys, well done.